Hey, my name's Aris. I won Survivor Exile Island. Yeah, winner, actual of friggin' Survivor. <laughs> Check this out. Previously on Survivor. The winner of Survivor Exile Island. Dream Team's alright with me. Dream Team's alright with me. Oh, oh yeah! yeah! Dream Team's alright with me, Dream Team's alright, oh, oh yeah. yeah! I'm Roy, I coach Destroy, this is Warn Dog. Coach of the Warn Dogs. It's Calvin. Coach Calvin A. Hey. We're Woo. down here at the TRC in Launceston having a bit of a beer. We're pretty yeah. excited because it's the opening to the 2013 Ooh. season. This episode we're going to look at some bargains, we're talking to Hodgie, oh, looking geez. at some rule changes, and most importantly we're talking to some rookies. Yeah, we're going to get you set up for the 2013 season. How about the intro, our boy Aris, Survivor! Champion, we survived the Greeks. It was That's awesome. Amazing. Outside staple centre, underneath the man, Magic Johnson. My favourite player of all time. Right. Now, if you can get us one of an intro from a celebrity doing the Dream Teams all right with me, Dream Teams all right. Oh yeah. yeah. You can also win yourself a prospectus. So, send them in. Hello there, Albert Lord here, PhD DT. Now I hear some of you are calling me PhD Fantasy, but hey, let's face it, the girls have been doing that for years. I've had my hand in a few rule changes this year, and the first one is the biggest. Two trades per week, every week. So by my calculations, that means 44 trades. Or if you count pre-season, 44 million. The second rule change is my favorite, and it's all about the structure. We've changed to a 6826 format, which I like to call the 6826. What it means is we've taken a defender and a forward out, and because every reaction has an equal and opposite reaction, we've put them both in the midfield, which equals a better game. Last year, due to the frustration caused by the buy round, we've had to tweak the system, which allows us to say goodbye to the buy. Well, the, the buy's actually still there, but you just have to count your best 18 scorers over that round. So good buy and good riddance. Oh, and that brings us to our last rule change, where common sense has definitely prevailed. We now have four emergencies as opposed to three, so no more Sunday afternoon ruck-ups. <laughs> ruck-ups. Thank you there, Lordy. Massive changes, massive changes this year, but I guess the big one, and this is the most controversial one, is that we've got those two trades per yeah. week, every week. So the 44 trades during the season is what, it, what it's looking like. What do you reckon, Calvin? I think, I think it's going to open up players like that I've avoided in the past, such as Jack Grimes, who is injury prone. Yeah. Now, I'll start with him this year, and I will dump him out, as soon as he breaks his leg or rips his head off or whatever those things he's done in the past. So I think it's gonna free up that as a bit of a flexibility. Well, a common question I've been getting on Twitter is people are concerned that everyone's gonna end up with the same team now because of this yep. new trading rule. What do you guys think of that? I think with, especially with the eight mids, so the change in structure there probably helps it because it, yep. that will make our teams a lot different to start with. But because we're making decisions all the time, and so we talk about things like it won't just be downgrading and upgrading, we'll probably have some sideways trades. People will make decisions differently all the time, and so I think it will mix our teams. A but bit I more. think people are going to do that. That could also be a huge negative when you're chasing players. So Scott yeah, Thompson or uh, Stevie J plays Gold Coast. They smash the guts out of those guys, so they're going to be, oh, I'm going to get Scotty Thompson and make him captain. Chasing things like that, it's going to bite you in the ass. But I geez. do prefer the idea of chasing future scores to chasing last week's score. I yeah. reckon that's what's going to separate the yeah, real yeah. good teams from the bad teams. That's right, a fair bit of research. Calvin's captain's type research. That's where I'd be going for more information, yeah. yeah. Or Definitely. Roy's Twitter account, because he's already plugged that already, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> At Roy At DT. Roy DT. <laughs> <laughs> so far so um, the groins are holding up alright and I've done the most pre-season I've done for a while so uh, no, I'm looking forward to getting the season and see what I can produce. Yeah no it looks been a really good pre-season uh, we obviously started uh, pretty early like everyone else and um, got a bit of running under the belt now and I suppose we're just moving into the footy phase of it and getting ready for games. Yeah no it's, it's been great it's been a, a bit of an adjustment from uh, Waffle to, to AFL but uh, I've been enjoying it. It's, um, 
it's been tough with the with the heat in Adelaide and that, but uh, loving the running, mate. It's been it's been going real well. Uh, well, no, I've had a pretty successful pre-season so far. Um, you know, I've done everything I can and um, hopefully put my best foot forward, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't really set any goals that far. Um, you know, I'll just wait and see what happens, but um, for me it's just about improving and, and getting better and I'll wait and see um, you know, how I'm going then, but um, it's not a number one priority for me to play um, early on, but if I can keep um, you know, working with the other guys in the forward line, I, I hope that I'll uh, improve quite a bit. Um, oh, at this stage, oh, I don't really know. Um, round one's a, a long way away. There's intricate clubs and, and NAB Cup to, to be played before then, so um, we'll see how they go, but at the moment, just, just training hard. Yeah, that, that role probably, um, inside midfielder, I think uh, you know, I could, could play that role and um, you know, hopefully play it as soon as possible. Yeah, it's just, um, you know, right now it's just about learning with other guys and I think the role I'll play is a, is a ruckman that can play in the forward line and push into the forward line, but, um, you know, I'm pretty light frame, so, you know, I'll have to build build a bit of strength and a bit of size and, and then one day, you know, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, play that sort of role. Um, probably a defensive half forward or, or a wingman. Um, haven't been playing much inside um, inside stuff at, at training. Um, they've been trying to mould me in there kind of a, a Brad Eber or a Kane Corns role, so maybe a run with as well, but um, yeah, I mean, wherever they want me to play, but somewhere in those positions, I'd say. Uh, I'm Nathan Jones, um, has really set the stand for a, a midfield like myself, so um, I've been trying to follow him around, and uh, just, just the way he goes about his footy is uh, elite, so no, it's been good. Yeah, look, it's been a really, uh, really good preseason for a lot of the guys, especially the younger guys. And, and Nick O'Brien's probably one who's uh, had a great preseason, and, and hopefully that comes out and he has a really strong season. And uh, you know, the, there's always some typical performers that perform really well, like your Brent Stans and these sort of guys. And, and Joe Watson looks in great shape. So um, you know, it's a very exciting time of the year for every club. And, you know, we're just looking forward to getting into games. I'd get on Ollie Wines. He's, uh, we call him Quadzilla. He's got the biggest quads on an 18-year-old I've ever seen. So he's one to, to look out for. Um, who's the other one? Oh, Br oh, Brad Evert, obviously. Is, uh, he's been killing it at training. And uh, his, his cousin Brett as well is someone who, whom you might pick up a little bit cheaper as well. Thanks heaps to Tom Craigie there. No, they were cool. awesome interviews with those rookies. Sensational. And be, uh, stay tuned for our other um, pre-season episodes because there's a couple more of those to come. Really insightful stuff. It is. Yeah. I'm looking forward to them. Now, we're going to look at a player in each position that we're pretty sold on at this stage of the year. So if you want to take it away, fellas? Yeah, well, I reckon in the back line, straight up for me is my boy Greg Broughton. Moved to Gold Coast. <laughs> As to, surely, surely, surely he's going to get back. He's three years where he's averaging the 80s, high 80s too. Um, had a lower year last year because of Ross Lyon, bang, sold for me. I'll take Gibbs. Yeah. I'll take Gibbs. He's at, he's <laughs> priced 15 points less than what he did in 2011 Ooh. and obviously dual position now, you can get him as a back. Yeah, I'm going for my boy Heppel. I, um, I backed him in in his Go second ahead. year last year and he didn't let me down. He was really consistent. Yep. Um, I think his third year, he could stick to that traditional breakout and average 100 with a bit more midfield time. For shizzle. All right, midfields, what do you reckon? I'm going Beanbox, Dane oh, Beans, he's, uh, he's fitting in with my youth policy, yep. he had a smashing year last year, he was absolutely amazing, I just love watching him play so much, he dominates games, I'm getting him in. I'll take his two mate, Swanee, I'm, I'm, look, you don't just get one Swan, you get two, you make him captain, if you get him Good. a two, you get two Swannies, you're actually only paying $344,000 <laughs> for him, that's a cheap Swan. That is cheap. It is. And Nick Maxwell, in an interview that I just did with him, said, best pre-season ever. Name Big dropping. Name word. dropping. Pick it um, up. Well, I'm going to go with my Maloney. Oh, Greg Maloney oh, moved up to Brisbane, right? He had a terrible year last year, so he's priced under 60, and he's capable of, well, high 80s, I think. That's mm -hmm. where I see him sitting there, and he can rack up the points. So that's basically a, a midfield mid-price player, which yes. I think so you, a lot of people could be on. You don't mind picking up a player that got tagged to something like zero possessions in a game last Is year? Is that Nathan Jones? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. All right. Mine All right, alone. All right, move on. Rux, who are we going? I'm going Haymack. I'm really excited by yeah. the fact he's going to a new club. He's getting on a little bit, so he doesn't quite fit my youth policy like <laughs> Beanbox, but 
he's someone that can average 90 to 100. Yeah, yeah. At a club like Geelong, yep. I think he's going to fit in that well. Um, he'll be another on baller there. He excites he me. He can get good possessions. Can't and he? he's discounted. He's discounted. He averaged about 91 last year. He's priced at about 82. Right. Easy I out. like that. Cool. Easy um, well, I'm locking in there. Um, well, this is an interesting one because Dean Cox is a dual position player this year. So I'm thinking about having him in my forward line. But so as a ruck, I'm going to go with a dual position link there, thinking Sam Rowe from Carlton. Okay. okay. So he's um, probably the be- one of the better chances to play yep. out of the guys that are the ruck forwards. Yep. Okay. There's McBean and there's that Sinclair there that are mm-hmm. lower price. But... That's that's my sort of thought that, at the like, moment. Do you reckon that just when we talked about the trades earlier, though, you reckon dual position status is as important as it has been in the past? Like if someone gets injured, out they go. You don't need to link up and down like you have in the past. That's a good point. Oh, he's a real good point. Maybe he's not as sold as what I thought he was. Call me in right. the kidna. <laughs> Call me in the kidna, Roy. Right. What well, well, a good point. Um, Thank you very much. Oh no, <laughs> Lundberger. Oh, Lundberger. You've got to have Lundberger. Cheapest chips. He's actually averaged 93 in the past, so yeah, that's lock that lot. puppy in. Yeah, for a lot, lot of number twos, I reckon. Forwards. Forwards. Oh, I'll well. tell you who I'm going to go. <laughs> Calvinator. Who are you going to give us? If Roy lets me. Don't Rocky. do it to Rocky. me. Um, you've got to go Rocky. Dual position, named as a forward. He actually averaged 112 two years ago. Cheapest chips. Rocky me. Hang on. Lock Roy, him. now let's go through who, Roy's, who Calvin's picked there. Who have you got? You've got Gibbs, Swan, Gilberger, Rocky. They're probably the four most selected players, I reckon, this year. But I have come up with a few good points in between. You have. I hope you've got enough salary to actually put a team together. Now, because you've stolen Rocky, I'm going a mega bargain here. Brent McCaffer didn't play a game last year because of injury. Um, having a smashing preseason, like they say everyone is, but yeah. he is actually going pretty well, well by the report. When I name dropped Nick Maxwell yeah. earlier, I spoke to him about him as well. <laughs> Calf was also nearly back for the 2012 finals. Wow. So that's off is, about three games in the VFL. And he is smashing at preseason, so keep an eye on him. Well, that's awesome. He's only 132,000, so. Yeah, if you want a bargain in your forward line, wow, hey. yeah, he plays a bit of wing I'm back on. flank too, so yeah, that's, that's an, he'll rack yeah. up. Yeah, get on him. Cheap. Well, Maxi sold me my one. Actually, is I've had a lot of um, club changing ones. Shannon Burns, he's oh, moved yeah. over to Melbourne. Yep. Forward line player, he's two hundred twenty nine grand. Yeah, that's pretty that bloody cheap for someone yeah, that is good. For sure. All right, now he's averaged in the eighties before in the past, all that sort of stuff. But he's in the leadership group. He's going to play. People have question marks. He only played, I think it's um, nine games in the last two years for yep. Geelong. So, Melbourne. He's going to be a lock. He's in the leadership group. Roy would get a game with Melbourne. Well, the thing is here, though, <laughs> if Maloney can't get a touch with Melbourne, Ooh. how is he going to? Um, good point. Maybe all these guys that I've picked aren't that sold then. Good points. Bad points. So a guy came in the shop the other day, right? And he was like... I'm after some discounted players. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I've got just a thing for you. Brent Staker, 132K. Embley, 264. Luke Ball, 343,000. Nathan Bock, 282. And Josh Kennedy, 272K. <laughs> yeah. And when he was leaving, he goes, hey, go! Got any discounted premiums? And I was like, <laughs> gotta come back about round four or five for them, man. <laughs> Dream Team Warehouse, where cheaper players are just the beginning. Alright, we're here with DT Talk's favourite man, captain of the Hawks, DT superstar, Luke Hodge. Welcome to the show, Luke. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Now, a um, few questions for you, Luke. Firstly, how did your team go this year and how are you looking moving on to 2013? I actually uh, didn't play this year. What do you mean? I, um... Look, everyone knows whenever you are, when you play our dream team, it's a passionate game. Um, actually, when I was doing some work with Channel 7, I'd go there and they'd sort of say at the end of a game at half time, they'd say, uh, say for Sydney was playing, I said, oh, what do, you, what do you like about the Sydney side? Yep. I actually didn't watch the game, I was watching O'Keefe and Goodsy because they were on my side. <laughs> so I actually wasn't fulfilling what I was supposed to do, so I'd get to the end of the game, but yeah. no idea who played well because I was watching two blokes. So you could um, say, oh, yeah, Goodsy. Shit, I scored six. Every, every time I spoke about someone was Woodsy and O'Keefe, they might not have had a touch or they had 30, but uh, yeah, so I had to give it away. Oh, mate, that is gold. That is absolute gold. Now, the rest of us, we're, um, you know, we are going to keep playing. We'll push through, we're not soft like you. Um, 
who who can we look at from the Hawks? Like I know Clinton Young's gone. Who's going to step into that role? You know, because he picks up a few kids. Um, it's going to change around a fair bit. I think there's going to be um, Clarko last year um, went a bit more rotating a lot more players through uh, through halfback, through wing, yeah. through midfield. So I think it's going to be similar blokes. You might you might hopefully see Grant Burgeon push up onto a wing. Um, yeah. Matty Sutton, if you you see how good Matty Sutton is kicking, he's coming at a halfback. If you can get him on a wing, deliver it to Frankie or to Ruffy, it's going to be it's going to be great. And I think yeah. what score assists will they give you? Well, in super coach, they probably give you a bit more. But we don't care about that shit. Dream team talk, Oji. Jesus, didn't you get that on the run? Well, I said I've deleted everything about it. Mate. I, was, I was ruining my. Right, I've got something for you. You've picked up Lakey. Now, Brian Lake, three years ago, he averaged 100 Dream Team port, points. Absolute machine. The year after, was an absolute laughing stock of the competition. It looked like he had, I don't know, numbing injections in his legs. Last year, not bad again. Yep. Um, I'm just thinking with him and Birch and the way you guys like to switch play, chip it around, is he someone I should have on the radar? Well, I think the best thing, buddy, he takes marks. Yeah. Um, He's not one of those defenders who spoil it. He takes a lot of marks from opposition moves. Yep. Yeah, he does. And, uh, and so he hits his targets. He, he's not someone who will take risky kicks. He, his, his safe kicks, he's effective kick. Yeah. Um, I reckon he'll be consistent. As long as his body holds up, yep. I reckon yeah, he'll be good getting his full back. Speaking of, speaking of his body holding up, any chance of it getting a little bit smaller? It was looking reasonably <laughs> heavy towards the end of the season. I did, uh, when he got traded, I did, did see him. Yes. And, uh, he did look quite big, but yeah, he, he yeah. did say that he had his, uh, he just got back from his six or seven weeks holiday, yeah. so look, everyone puts on a little bit in the off season. They do. And, um, uh, and since he's been picked up, well, I've, uh, every time I've been out of the club, he's been out there. Yep. Um, so he started three or four weeks early in the rest of the boys, so he's actually right. trimmed back down to a very fit right, right so these days. If we put it on a little scale here, Stewie do, Stewie do. Lakey, where are we looking? Um, I think Stewie Juice got him covered. Oh, does he? Yes. Got him covered. Got him covered. Right Mind now. Mind Stewie Juice had 12, 12 months off. Lakey only had He did play that. well heavy though, Stewie Juice, <laughs> didn't he? Right, anyone who can kick a ball like that, he can do whatever <laughs> Now, personally, um, how's your body going? Are you right to go? Yeah, um, hopefully uh, I'll start running uh, middle of December. Yep. And then if all goes well, um, try and get into some skills by, uh, by January, mid January. Right. And I've always said, as long as you can do January, February, and majority of March, yeah. Um, yeah, you should set yourself up for it. Sure so, 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 now, you played a lot of the season all over the ground. Like, There's a chance you could be in dual position, forward, back. Um, I mean, forward, mid, you know, you could be anywhere actually, any of the combinations. Where do you want to play footy this year? Uh, I think depending on how it's in the pre-season, Clark goes sort of said, you know, have a nice side um, nice set on the back. Um, but in saying that, he's, uh, when you've got blokes like Shawnee Bergwijn and a lot of the other guys who do rotate a lot of positions, yep. um, he said, have your um, sort of set on half back, but then you might play maybe a bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of wing. Okay. And, uh, forward. Right, there's a message to virtual sports. He's going to play a lot of footy across half back, make him dual position, make him a lock in my back line. <laughs> Hodgy, thanks very much, mate. Can't wait to have you back on board and playing Dream Team again. Thanks, Once you get over this little psychological barrier that you're stuck in. <laughs> Thanks heaps to our boy Hodgie. He has our got to be boy. the best bloke in the AFL, I reckon. Yep. And this year, I think we will get him back on. He's got as it. long as we help him out with a few trades and that sort of thing. All right, before we go, a couple more games to mention for the AFL fantasy franchise that's going on there. Oh. Pretty much the first one is a draft game. That is an exciting one where you can... They've revamped it all, yep. made it a lot better. It's not a subscription thing where you pay for anymore. Free one. Oh, so cool. lots of details on that on the website. And also the match day game, which will have a pretty big league going on and hopefully some very, very good mm. prizes for that one um, where you get to make a little team of eight to play just in a match and all that sort of stuff over a few select games of the season, it's which exciting will be fun. little side project, it? Isn't is, it? and because the cool one about that is that the first game is the NAB Cup Grand Final. Oh, so wicked. we get a little taste of DT before DT really Our, starts. We will have a massive league in that. It'll be huge, and there'll be some cool prizes, so stay tuned for that. Awesome. Wicked. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, dreamteamtalk.com is where it's at. Make sure you visit us all the time. We've got heaps of wicked stuff pumping out. Now, you'll see us when the NAB Cup starts up again. So join us in. Cheers. 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 Cheers.